A lot of crazy stuff is happening as always in the space flight industry. For one, it now has been confirmed that the Boeing Starliner will not launch before 2022. But this probably shouldn't surprise anyone who is watching this channel. Then we have some new details of the Blue Origin lawsuit against NASA with regard to awarding SpaceX a human landing system. And then let's also talk about another phenomenon we often encounter these days. Clueless politicians ranting against so-called billionaire joy rides to space. Oh man, they would just never learn. A lot to talk about, so stay tuned. The Boeing Starliner. It should have been the pride of America. It should have been the space capsule that would return American astronauts to space on hardware manufactured by the same people who built the mighty Saturn V rocket's first stage. It should have been a glorious comeback by a company that, to put it mildly, experienced some self-made troubles in the last years. But now it is all but confirmed that the Boeing Starliner will launch in 2022. That's right friends, the Starliner that had its maiden flight in December 2019 and that almost experienced a total disaster during that flight, will not fly before next year. In 2019, Boeing was still in a race with SpaceX who would first return American astronauts to space by launching American hardware again from American soil. Since the retirement of the space shuttle in 2011, the US had to seek the help of the Russians and use their antiquated Soyuz rockets to bring their astronauts to space. Quite the embarrassment. And the Boeing Starliner held a lot of promise for NASA. In 2019, it was still unclear if SpaceX or Boeing would win the race. But then the Starliner had its disastrous maiden flight that, according to a later released NASA report, experienced 80 bugs during that mission, which almost had the capsule spinning out of control and being destroyed upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. So the Starliner was overhauled on orders of NASA, and it only recently should have had its second unmanned flight on August 13th this year. But due to valve failures, the Starliner launch was aborted. 13 out of 64 valves in Starliner's propulsion system had failed to open and Boeing still doesn't understand why. In contrast, SpaceX now has already flown several manned missions to the ISS. The latest launch was the incredible Private Inspiration 4 mission, which was a giant milestone for human spaceflight, being the first all-private space mission to such an altitude ever. Of course, that didn't really impress US President Joe Biden, as Elon jokingly said that he was still sleeping. <laughs> nice one, Elon. And in our last video on the topic of the Boeing Starliner, we already predicted that Starliner wouldn't fly before 2022. But by 2022, and who knows when exactly next year, SpaceX will be so far ahead already regarding spaceflight missions with Crew Dragon that it's not even funny anymore. But hey, of course Starliner costs $2 billion more in development costs than SpaceX's Crew Dragon. And of course Boeing also charges twice as much per seat from NASA as does SpaceX, $90 million instead of 45. The Starliner debacle is another nail in the coffin for old space as their significance is declining further and further as compared to SpaceX. It is absolutely dreadful to think of what would have happened if SpaceX wouldn't exist for whatever reason. We would be stuck here with completely inefficient government-subsidized companies that would need years to develop new hardware. The US would still be flying with Soyuz to the ISS and the return to the moon would be not possible since NASA wouldn't have enough budget to finance a human moon lander. We would be stuck here on Earth until an asteroid or a supervolcano or a killer virus would wipe us from the face of the Earth. And that is exactly the reason why we should be happy that SpaceX exists in the first place. The Boeing Starliner debacle shows with 100% clarity that we can be extremely thankful to have SpaceX. 
Oh, and I'd be really happy if you'd subscribe to our small channel here, as it would greatly help us to continue making videos on space-related topics. Thank you very much in advance. And if you want SpaceX models for displaying them at home, there is no better place to order really nice looking 3D printed models from the company Bohimso. On their Etsy store site, link in the description, you can order really high quality models of all kinds of SpaceX rocket hardware. From Falcon 9 to Falcon Heavy to all Starship variants, even to Cargo Dragon, Crew Dragon, hell even the future Dragon XL that will resupply the Lunar Gateway starting in 2023. They have it all and they also have many more models from our favorite sci-fi franchises such as the Sulaco from Aliens or the Razor Crest from Star Wars The Mandalorian. On this occasion we'd also like to remind you to comment on the environmental impact assessment of Starship and Super Heavy at Boca Chica. You can do this on the FAA's website by sending them an email to this email address here. SpaceX needs the support of the entire space community because their mission is so important. Nothing less than the future of humanity in space is at stake here. So please write the FAA on the topic of the environmental assessment of SpaceX at Boca Chica as this will determine how often Starship will be permitted to launch from there. Thank you very much for your support. The future humans will thank you. Now to something different, namely the wonderful lawsuit against NASA by the company formerly known as Blue Origin, but which we henceforward shall always refer to as Sue Origin. Sorry, we just have to show you this hilarious cartoon here by Daily Hopper, which I found in the comment section of spacenews.com. It's really hilarious, thanks Daily Hopper, you made my day. So some also quite hilarious details have emerged from the lawsuit. The core of Blue Origin's argument apparently is that NASA supposedly ignored a requirement that bidders include a Flight Readiness Review FRR, before the launch of each element of the lander systems. Blue Origin now alleges that SpaceX did not include FRRs before each tanker Starship launch, which will carry propellant to fuel the Moon Lander Starship. NASA in later negotiations with SpaceX did require an FRR before each type of Starship launch, but that also failed to meet the requirements of the solicitation, according to Blue Origin. To which Elon replied via Twitter, we always do flight readiness reviews. This argument makes no sense. So wait, this is quite insane. The core argument of the entire lawsuit is based on a wrong assumption. You can already see that the chances for Blue Origin winning the lawsuit are below 1%. But it was never about winning the lawsuit in the first place now, was it? It was about blocking SpaceX and delaying Artemis long enough until Sue Origin would find a way to inject their tiny lobby lander into the Artemis program again, which they are actively trying to do by doing what they do second best after suing of course. Namely, sending out a gigantic army of lobbyists and lobbying like there's no tomorrow in order to convince Congress in Washington DC to increase NASA's budget as to allow the insertion of a second human lander into the Artemis program. Which also won't happen. You know, sometimes we get the impression that the whole purpose of Sioux Origin never was to actually accomplish something real but just to delay and stall SpaceX's incredible pace of advancement. One could even go as far as to say that Sue Origin is just a bogus company that never intended to create real products apart from their small suborbital phallic shaped rocket. And that the company is actually an old space puppet company that is being used by old space to wage war against SpaceX. But hey, these are just theories, so please take them with a grain of salt. And yet, it's not so unrealistic to think along these lines. And now from Sue Origin to other hilariously clueless people who don't understand the significance of space advancement. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, criticized in a speech on September 21st, quote, billionaires joyriding to space while millions go hungry on Earth." End quote. 
the lack of understanding what spaceflight does for humanity is every time completely baffling to me. Now I don't know if this was directed towards Virgin Galactic or Sioux Origin, or maybe even towards SpaceX's Inspiration4 mission. It doesn't really matter, because even Sioux Origin's flight, as unimpressive as it might be compared with Inspiration4 mission, at least does advance spaceflight in some form and advances the capability of humanity to reach space. Of course, this argument is a lot stronger for real orbital flights such as Inspiration4. Human spaceflight advances technology and creates a lot of jobs. Every dollar that is invested in spaceflight flows back into the economy and creates some dollars on top in form of offshoot technologies and new industry branches. The list of offshoot technologies from the era of the space race is long. And we are talking about technologies that save lives, such as cardiac pacemakers, that are directly based on technology from the early days of the Apollo program, or rescue blankets, or insulating foam, landmine removal devices, and so on, the list is incredibly long. I am every time baffled when politicians or radical activists bring this sentence that people are hungry here on Earth while billionaires fly to space. It might be that exactly by these billionaires flying to space, new technologies are being created that might boost agricultural production here on Earth. For example, Kimball Musk, Elon Musk's brother, is working on solving the food problem here on Earth by locally growing food in hydroponic containers. This technology will be used in a modified form on Mars, but it can also help solving the food crisis here on Earth. And this was just a random example that came to my mind. So anyways, every time a clueless person brings forth this argument, please tell them about the offshoot technologies from the Apollo program. We put a link with a list into the description or tell them about Kimball's hydroponic farms. I mean, it makes me just plain angry this stuff when uninformed people try to rant about spaceflight. Anyways, friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, Jishuan and me wish you a nice day. All the best and on to the future.